Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. It's me, David, and we're finally ready to conduct this investigation. Now that we have the ammonia. The hanged man. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell, emanating is all it does now. God, why is it? Ammonia gives you a plus one. I damn God, why? No, we won't be doing this investigation. I just wasted the ammonia. That ammonia didn't help at all. Nor does the wind right now. You feel the lieutenant pat you on the back rhythmically. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You're facing through the odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Hmm. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate, throw up, initial autopsy, throw up, bag it. He pats on your back again. Then drive to the station, maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. There's a pause. A white lie. Not being hungover helps too. Do it without me, I just can't keep it down. No, this is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. He withdraws his hands and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Okay. Volumetric shit compressor. <laughs> we should go talk to locals, find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You received a thought. Hmm. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together and come back and have another go. Okay. Volumetric shit compressor. Your shit is apart. And it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together. Compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that will help. I love this game. <laughs> well, that went well. Right. Let's revisit this. Again, please. There's a secret door hidden behind the panels of a turnite. That's why they're too orderly. There it is, you see a shabby little door. Very good. What is this then? A tool shed? He peeks inside. Let's investigate. Right now. One thing I do want to do is invest that point straight away. I think this is going to be needed. I mean... Hmm. I'm not massively keen on... on uh, spending my resources badly, but I don't think this is ever going to hurt. Um, that should be... That should be good. Although it has given me, uh, it's given me more health, I guess. Let's go inside. Ooh. Okay, there's a few key things to look at here. 
A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Oh no. Be still my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror, he's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use professionally, I mean. Hmm. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere. Perhaps not. He looks at you. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, he points to the ladder in the corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbour. No, a secret path the local kids use. An empty tube of magnesium. Magnesium supplement. A magnesium supplement you rub on your chest to live a happy magnesium rich life. Oh, magnesium is very useful. So is potassium. The post says get out of the way or get fucked up. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. Nice. Let's have a peek up here then. Mm -hmm. Is that part of my police uniform by any chance? Ah, thank you, game, for just taking me away a bit. This doorway is going to collapse soon. Ah, yes, I can get up here, good. Yeah, I'll take that. Can I get up here? Nice. Right, let's take this free stuff. I need the money, realistically. Nothing else up here to do, so let's head back down. This feels risky to me, so... This whole place feels risky to me. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. Postcard, Grand Coron 37. Oh, money, money, money. Hmm. Well, the question is, where do I go from here? a way up or anything like that. Hmm. I said down here. What does this actually need? Oops. Looks like someone left it this tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Some someone left his cloak behind. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Look around. What exactly would you be doing here? Do you really think this cloak is mine? So have Wi-Fi. Go for the cloak. Jump over the ledge. Yeah, that, that'll just get injured. Um, look around. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane tower in the distance over the container yard. What exactly are we doing up here? The cloak, I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it, he looks over the ledge of the cold pavement below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous, two meters tops. So whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like the bag with gears exploding in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide? What exactly are we doing here? 
<sighs> We're awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbour. They're bound to have information for us. I thought that was our intention. Savoy Fair. Okay. Yeah, not right now. Does any of this reduce my Savoy Fair? Shoes come off. Trousers come off. I'm sure he will appreciate this. That's a lot better. Go for it. I don't like how that... Uh, did I just fail horrifically? As you leap into the air, chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Don't close your eyes when jumping off anything. Continue the voyage through the salty air. As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Although it's capable, it must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it, the lieutenant explains. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbour now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbour rushes back in. Well, let me just put my clothes back on. Let's see. Plus one is spirit to corpse and shivers. Well, it's just an improved everything, so. Hmm. Well, I can't investigate it, so I guess there's nothing in the pockets. Let's have a look at this. Where does this go? That's a good question. That's the stairs, don't go up there. Punch clock, payphone. An imposing combination of punch clock and payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, tokens unavailable to strike, use change. This must be the phone that was mentioned. The radio is emitting a strange buzzing sound. A standard office file cabinet, the drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the copy machine on. Well, that means they're probably going to come back at some point. Yeah, well, well, whatever, I'll just steal whatever. Let's have a rummage, see what I can find. <coughs> yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Plus one visual calculus. Well. Don't mind if I do. I'm already really good at it. Drama is not important. Every worker equals member of the board is written on top of the flyers. Below the flyers, the union logo and demand democracy. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. The door is locked and cannot be opened from this side without a pass card. Guess you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the union to just leave their paper lying around like this. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly inside a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data, two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revacol from the outside world, from Mundi, Grad, and even Yilmara. And the name and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revacol. Curon, Coal City, the Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus where the lines are getting blurry. Force yourself to go through the folders. Nah. Look how blurry all the lines are on these papers are. All the lines on these papers are. How unwieldy your own willpower is to yourself. You're like an absurdist Samaran monk, focusing through not focusing. Hermeneutics was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters float before your eyes, less meaningful and aesthetically more pleasing. Can I actually focus through not focusing? 
You are a police officer, not a spiritual healer. You can't focus the normal way by turning your attention to something and not letting go. Leave the folders alone for now. Yeah, you should already try again. Whatever's hidden there is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. It appears to be a to-do list written in large and even capital letters. Remember Leo. Everard shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everard plants. Sweep office floor. More banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Uh, look, Kim. A to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Clare, probably. The head of the Debardeurs Union. He inspects the note. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd on the list. What is so special about this borscht? Cope, drugs, booze? blood. Take another look at the note. Special whirling borscht. Yeah, well the thing there is, we're dealing with the whirling, uh, that's the name of the place. Thought complete. Guillaume le million. Guillaume le million. Bad news. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop in 38. He went on a tour to the Sin Yao province in Safre, where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. Huzzah. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia and wholesome objects and the Sylvia Trainer single Wonderland skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s. And also as a warning. Um, plus one pain threshold, blood oxygen is boring. All psyche learning caps raised by one? Okay. A bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the centre of a collapsing stars, not lawful, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. Learning cap for endurance raised to four, all endurance white checks unlocked. Marvellous. And then what? Those are... Hmm... So once you solve it, I guess they're... You can add or remove them, I guess. So they're like unlocked? Maybe, or are they permanent? Oh, you have to pay to get them, okay. That's interesting. Oh well. Um... Well, I've got my jacket at least. That's a plus. <clears throat> well, I'm up here now, so might as well find a way down. Collecting rainwater. Well, that indeed it is. Can I just... Do them individually. I would like these all, please. I really could do with the money. And you are not helping, sir. You are in the way. Stop it.
I will clean up the town. Let's have a look at this. This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads Rene Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself, sit down and have a breather. I'm going to search the booth. Hmm. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a royal carabineer uniform. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Um. I think this can be a side thing. Yeah, something about like this man piques my interest. Fine, he nods, but let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around. Leave. Yes, valid. There's no way down from here. That's... All around you, great machines and quiescence. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering looks like a forest of the snow. Crane control panel. A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Aluma and Etiendre. At the end, uh, no. I faded with the use. It seems to control a large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. God, no. I'm not an idiot. Uh, let's have a rummage. Any industrial lettering on the platform. Gewalsund. Whale Fjord in Arden. Hmm. Probably we could get this crane down and look at its contents. It's not really... We're getting very far away from everything that we're meant to be looking at here. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. The speaker tower is silent. I can't read the rest of the text. It does make sense. They're all no one should be up here anyway because they won't strike. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. Okay, I can't open that. Industrial-sized thermos smells like burnt coffee. That it would. It's hard to make coffee in huge volumes. The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. Uh, white waves on red. I'm not sure I should be investigating the left of them. Maybe I can get away without being seen. Oh, okay, I can go in here. I feel like I'm very off task. Coffee in the giant thermos is still lukewarm. A stair made of pallets leading up. Oh, I think this is the guy. A taxidermy fish that tells time. Everard Claire. Okay, so he's the guy with the screwed up eye. Because it's drawn screwed up. Before he is a walrus of a man behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he strains himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Are you in charge with the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsaragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Dubois Union here in Martinet. The man relaxes into his chair and continues. 
I would offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand. He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair on the other hand looks like a torture device. You go ahead. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good. He thinks I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. Excellent, Fine. Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man. And reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Debarges Union help a representative of the Rebishal Citizens Militia today? Oh dear. The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Well, that's a sentence. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Garte. Some people have no manners. It pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with the cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He points at it again. It's 25 real. Keep it. I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts then. He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks further into his chair. Now. I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun? Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Lost gun? Lost gun? Hmm. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escapes gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I'm going to take a morale thing, because I can. Huh. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant be very worried. The polite thing to say is, I would appreciate any help you could provide. Are you alright, Harry? You seem anxious. Well, don't be. Everything's going to be alright. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Yeah, and rely on Kim for this. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Officer, we will deal with this later. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Ah. Oh. So I have to take this composure test. Well, I look forward to failing this. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Well... Okay, so here's the thing. Two is true. However, one, situationally speaking, one is appropriate. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Also, I've just realized I have literally no goddamn morale. Like Mr. Me. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. The large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect, you're in some stupor. Uh, keep sliding down the chair like a jello shot. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? 
Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hand somehow. In kind of throwing motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Mm. Vaguely just with your hands above your head. Um... Actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I could use that glass of water. I think that's the safest option. What an odd demonstration of... Huh? You got me, Harry. <laughs> I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It's about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. I want to talk about the hanging. That's the only reason I'm here. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinet. He nods. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. Hmm. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good, the lieutenant says with a slow nod. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. Suddenly he slaps us off the floor. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, is that true? Are we door opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. He looks to the union boss. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now, I just need you to go open a little door for me. And leave it unlocked. A simple thing, absolutely nothing shady about it. I can't accept this thing. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Ever worse, we won't be able to speak at like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. He winks at you. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. The lieutenant sighs. Yes, we both understand what you mean. Meant. <laughs> Meat. Mm. I bet I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. Wait. He leans, reaches into his drawer, and pulls out a plastic card. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Um, thanks for wondering how I'm supposed to get out. Great, wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Here, you're one of us now, a real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Well, um... Okay. And on that note, we are going to end it there. Thank you so very much for watching. And have a wonderful day. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.